this one. I'll do this real quick. Take my uh, blood pressure pill. Take my blood pressure pill. Only medicine I take. I don't want to take that either. Get to another space and I won't do that. It's a fly running around here. Buzzing around the uh, thing. Oh, uh, listen. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still on strategy and tactics, you know? Uh, and what that means. Uh, there was a long time ago, I said, what? Well, I would ask, sometimes I'd ask them to do workshops, you know, in audio drama. I ask people, well, what's your through line? You know, what what, 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 what carries you through? And I'll show you what I mean. Like, I realized at some, some early point, I had a, a course in uh, in high school called Lab Techniques, right? In other words, you, there was like a, a science course. You know, where you had a choice you could take, uh, chemistry or whatever, whatever, or a lab techniques. So I, I didn't want to do chemistry, so I did lab techniques, right? It served me well, because that's what got me out in the Air Force. When I took, like, there's a whole thing that happened there. I became a lab technician, which is where lab techniques come from. And I, I became a lab technician, and that gave me a, a, a entree into the middle class, whatever. What is all that? Oh, anyway, look, here's the thing. But my other through line is uh, it's in theater, it's in, as a stage manager. Now, let me tell you how I started stage manager. Uh, I was in Negro Ensemble Company, in the mid intermediate class, in 1967, I guess, when we started. And uh, and we we did the we did a bunch of things, and we had to do these class projects. At the end, at the end of our first season, um, in the middle of 1968, they put on a play, and the, the class had the right to play whatever. Having one of the one of the one of the um, I'm saying girls because we all were young. One of the girls in the class wrote this play, and it's called The Last Dragon. And I was the title character, not the main character, but the, well, the title character, the dragon. He was a militant dragon. He got he got um, he got uh, uh, they captured him and pulled him over to this land. It's like basically an allegory, not, uh, an allegory to slavery. Or whatever happened. So I was a slave. Anyway, so we display. I wasn't very good, but it was very interesting to me. When I say I wasn't very good, I was all right, but uh, not an actor. Well, I just say it was all right. But what's, what's one of the things that startled me was that at the end of the play, when you had the whatever, whatever somebody, I, I clearly remember, just like she must have been like 13 year old girl came and asked my autograph. I, it, it was strange to me. You know, somebody's asked me for my autograph. Wow, that was, it didn't. It was a weird thing in my head, and I'm, you know, I started to argue with her, but you know, everybody was around, so I just gave her the autograph. And but she was the only, I think she was the only one to ask for an autograph. And that's me. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so part of the thing about Negro Ensemble Club, we were trained in everything, dance. You know, uh, Lewis Johnson was our dance instructor. We had we had karate classes. We had when well, we did Kungis Hobbies, we had stick fighting. I mean, you know, we you you, you took. Uh, we had, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, lighting and uh, and sound design, just everything, you know, all all that that so you dance, all kinds of things like that, and so like, uh, so we had all those things. So one of the things uh, uh, that happened is in the production. One of the productions they was doing in 1968. Um, I guess it's still part of the first season. That's right. It was still, yeah, it's still it's part of the first season. Yeah, it's still part of the first season because the first uh, offering was. Um, was uh, not Conky's Harvest. Was uh, Song of the Lusitanian Bogey. Song of the Lusitanian Bogey is still is the, is the best play they ever did. It was an amazing play. Anyway, um, so anyway, uh, so I ended up and for that production because all the students had to do work on productions. My I would I hang the lights. I hung the lights and I would, and I was hired actually as the lighting the lighting board person for the production of Daddy Goodness. Daddy Goodness is a play. It was a French guy who wrote the play, but uh, Richard Wright, Richard Wright, there he goes again. He's, he's always been in my life. Richard Wright, Richard Wright, talk about Richard Wright. Come on, Richard Wright. Oh, here's my thing. The guy that did this, that wrote the book, The Outsider, which is a, a bigger, bigger Thomas from, you know, from from that, that book he wrote, the, that other book with Bigger Thomas in it. The Outsider it was a play. I made mean, an audio drama that I, I included. His first uh, thing was uh, his, uh, his his, his uh, first book of that thing, of Richard Rice, The Outsider. I mean, the first book he ever wrote. Let me put this back up where it belongs. Outsider, Richard Wright. Love him. Great author. Anyway, so he wrote Daddy Goodness as a play. You know, he's. So I worked on a Richard. I didn't even know it at the time. Well, I, I didn't know it. Anyway, I'm jumping around. Just hold on. And, but so part of that place, somewhere we were hanging lights, and uh, Michael Schultz and, and Buddy Butler came to me because Michael was the lighting designer. I what Buddy was doing. Maybe I forgot what they were doing. Uh, 
Uh, and they said, well, you know, Anthony, you're, you're you're right in front of the camera, but we need to, but you know, you're needed in back of the camera. But it's using camera as a, as a you know metaphor, you know, for, in other words, on stage as an actor, anybody. They, they said we got lo that's what they said. They said we have loads of people, there's loads of actors, very few people can do this technical work. So because I was taking lights, whatever, and so they assigned me to Ed, to Edmund Cambridge, who was the who was the stage manager for Daddy Goodness, and I basically they, I trained under Ed, Ed Cambridge after that production. Okay, I get all that to say. So what I'm trying to say is I did I did a lot of things in theater, and beyond that, I did a bunch of other stuff, including writing. Now, here's the thing. When a play comes in, so you have a bunch of people in a room, a play comes in, they pop the play down in the middle of the floor, boom. The, act, who, the actors, they're going to run there and see how many lines they have. They got to put that, that, that. They got to work on that thing for, for the play. That, how many lines they got, how they get it belt, how they do it. The, 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 the set designer saying, hmm, how can I make this thing look, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. The lighting designer might say, oh, I, I found this new effect that, that they, they go do fire. I want to make sure I can include this in the play, you know. Of course, the director wants to put their stamp on it, you know, like that. The producer just wants to make money. That the author wants to make sure that they say all his words the way, you know, all the words correctly, or whatever it is, you know what I mean, like that. The only person in this whole configuration, the stage manager, he's the only person that I'm saying he, but you know, he, she. It's the only person that takes all the ingredients and see what they have and works with what they have. You know, a, 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 to a director might go to a producer, I need more money for this, so I need to hire this actor, whatever. The, the actor might say, well, I need more money. Somebody might complain and they always want something, and the producer will say, I ain't got no money, or throw some more money at this. But the stage man, his mentality is not for anything personal, but for the production, how, what, what they have, how to make this, what you have, production work. You see? So here's what I'm looking at with, with the uh, American descendants of chattel slavery movement. That's what that's what I think. I mean, and, and we don't have any funds at this particular point. You know, it's not a, you know we have no no headquarters, or whatever it is. It's, it's a virtual. Um, it's a hashtag right now. You know what I mean? But the hashtag is it's an idea. You know how they say you can't break an idea, you can't kill an idea. So this idea is starting to starting to grow, grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And so it's very important before we get a building or any of this other stuff, we just keep on working on what we have to work on because that's what you do. You work on what you have. You don't say, well, let me get some money so I can make it. No, because you're throwing money at the problem. You're not solving the, not the, uh, the situation. That's solving the situation. So I find this, when I look at this, I approach it as a, as a, as a stage manager, you know? I, I mean, I don't have, I, I can't even, where I am right now, I can't even, well, I guess I could give some money into, I will eventually give some money into whatever we have but we have to have strategies and tactics to deal with what we have not what not we projected we're going to be or if we had this or we had that or we got some celebrities or whatever it is no right now what we have we work on what we have and step, step by step it'll grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow that's the way it goes okay so that's a little message from me t from the patterson's taking the train to tibet letting you know what i only suspect from a desk of the American descendant of chattel slavery. Oh, oh, by the way, it's not really real. I mean, it's a real desk, but I mean, I'm not an official in the movement or nothing like that. You know, this is like one of those disclaimers that we do at the end of a radio program. What I'm trying to say is Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore, you know, they're, they're the ones that, that do this, you know what I mean? So I'm not speaking for the main thing. I, I'm only speaking from my own little perspective of my own little life, how things happen, okay? <laughs> Just so you know, because I don't want to get in no trouble with nobody. Ooh, enough people around here trying to pump, pimp this movement as it is.